Hello. When we left off, Al had made some pretty dumb decisions, in my opinion. Certainly rash, let's put it that way. In any case, he's about to make yet another dumb decision. Yes, it's coming soon. The promised Anne Savage. And yes, she is just like her name. Let's go on with the show and see what Anne Savage has in store for poor Tom Neal as Al the piano player. Off we go. still raining, and the drops streaked down the windshield like tears. I kept imagining I was being followed, that I could hear sirens back in the distance. Just how long it took me to cover the 60-odd miles to the California state line, I don't know. I lost all track of time, but the rain had stopped and the sun was up when I pulled up to the inspection station. Hello? Carrying any fruits or vegetables? No. Any livestock or poultry? No. I'd see your registration and driver's license, please. Anything in the baggage compartment? Just baggage. Charles Haskell, Jr., age 30, brown eyes, dark hair. Identifying marks, none. Are you Charles Haskell, Jr.? Yes. Well, remember, if you're employed and you stay over 30 days, you take out California plates. All right, officer, but I'll only be in the state a short while. Right, you can go now. I couldn't drive any farther without some sleep. Cops or no cops, I knew I had to hit the hay and hit it hard. I was dead tired.
There was no time to lose. Every minute I had to be Charles Haskell was dangerous. And I'd have to be Charles Haskell until I got to some city where I could leave the car and be swallowed up. That meant driving the car as far as San Bernardino, maybe even to Los Angeles. In a little town, I might be noticed, but in a city, I should be safe enough. Then, after I ditched the car, I could go on to Sue. But those five minutes at the state line made me realize it might be a good idea to find out a little bit about Mr. Haskell. Then, if anybody asked me questions, I could give the right answers. The first thing I found out was that I had $768. This was a lot of jack. But believe me, it was the kind of money I'd rather not have. And then I found out from a letter Haskell was carting around in his bag that he wasn't the open-handed, easy-going big shot who went around buying dinners for strange hitchhikers. Before I got done reading it, I saw him more as a chiseler. It was written to his old man in California, the one he hadn't seen in so many years. In it, Haskell posed as a salesman of hymnals, of all things. It was easy to see where Haskell expected to raise a new stake for his book in Miami by rooking his old man. That was about all I found out from his effects, and it was enough. I told myself, maybe old man Haskell was lucky his son kicked off. He would never know it, but it saved him from taking a flyer in sacred literature preferred. Desert Center, I pulled up for water. There was a woman. Hey, you! Come on if you want to ride. Where are you going? How far are you going? That took me by surprise, and I turned my head to look her over. She was facing straight ahead, so I couldn't see her eyes. But she was young, not more than 24. Man, she looked as if she'd just been thrown off the crummiest freight train in the world. Yet in spite of this, I got the impression of beauty. Not the beauty of a movie actress, mind you, or the beauty you dream about when you're with your wife, but a natural beauty. A beauty that's almost homely because it's so real. Then suddenly she turned to face me. How far did you say you were going? Los Angeles. L.A.? L.A. is good enough for me, mister. That's what I was afraid of. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. People get in trouble for doing that. What's your name? You can call me Vera if you like. You live in Los Angeles? No. Where are you coming from? Oh, back there. Needles? No. Oh, sure, Phoenix. You look just like a Phoenix girl. Are the girls in Phoenix that bad? The girl must have been pretty tired because she fell asleep not 20 minutes after she stepped into the car. She lay sprawled out with her head resting against the far door, like Haskell. I didn't like that part of it much, but I didn't wake her up. It wasn't that this girl still worried me. I'd gotten over that funny feeling I had when she looked at me which I put down as just my jangled nerves. With her eyes closed, the test has gone out of her. She seemed harmless enough. And instead of disliking her, I began to feel sorry for her. The poor kid probably had had a rough time of it. Who was she anyway? And why was she going to Los Angeles? 
And where'd she come from in the first place? The only thing I knew about it was her name. Not that it made any difference. A few hours more and we'd be in Hollywood. I'd forget where I parked the car and look up Sue. This nightmare of being a dead man would be over. Who this dame was, well, it was no business of mine. Where did you leave this body? Where did you leave the owner of this car? You're not fooling anyone. This buggy belongs to a guy named Haskell. That's not you, mister. You're out of your mind. That's my name, Charles Haskell. I can prove it. It's my driver's Save license. Save yourself the trouble, mister. Having Haskell's wallet only makes it worse. It just so happens I rode with Charlie Haskell all the way from Louisiana. He picked me up outside of Shreveport. You rode? You heard me. Then it all came back to me. All the talk about dueling and scars and scratches. There was no doubt about it. Vera must be the woman Haskell had mentioned. She must have passed me while I slept. Well? Well, I'm waiting. My goose was cooked. She had me. That Haskell guy wasn't dead yet. He wasn't stretched out stiff and cold in any Arizona gully. He was sitting right there in the car, laughing like mad while he haunted me. Well? There was nothing I could say. It was her move. Vera, whatever her name was, it was just my luck picking her up on the road. It couldn't have been Helen, or Mary, or Evelyn, or Ruth. It had to be the very last person I should ever have met. That's life. Whichever way you turn, fate sticks out a foot to trip you. I told her everything, but she didn't believe my story. I should have saved my breath. That's the greatest cock and bull story I ever heard. So he fell out of his car. Say, who do you think you're talking to, a hick? Listen, mister, I've been around, and I know a wrong guy when I see one. What'd you do, kiss him with a wrench? Now, wait a minute. What I told you was true. You see, that's why I had to do it. You think I killed him. Well, the cops would have thought so, too. Yeah, well, maybe they still think so. What makes you so sure I'll shut up about this? Sure, I'm innocent. Give me a break, will you? It won't do me any good having you pinched. The cops are no friends of mine. Now, if there was a reward, but there isn't. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. I'm not through with you by a long shot. Let's see that roll. Is that all Haskell had? Isn't it enough? No, I thought he had more. Not that I know of. You can search me. You think I'm holding out on you? Well, maybe I will at that. He told me he was going to bet $3,000 on a horse named Paradisical on Wednesday at Santa Anita. He was stringing you along. He meant $300. Maybe. Sure, three bucks, $300. He was a piece of cheese, a big blowhard. Listen, mister, don't try and tell me anything about Charlie Haskell. Remember, I knew him better than you did. Okay, then you knew he was a four-flusher. That explains the three grand bet. I'm not so sure he didn't have that three grand. Why should I believe you? You got all the earmarks of a cheap crook. Now, wait a Shut minute. Up. You're a cheap crook and you killed him. For two cents, I'd change my mind and turn you in. I don't like you. All right, all right, don't get sore. I'm not getting sore, but just remember who's boss around here. If you shut up and don't give me any arguments, you'll have nothing to worry about. But if you act wise, well, mister, you'll pop into jail so fast it'll give you the bends. I'm not arguing. Well, see that you don't. You know, as crooked as you look, I'd hate to see a fella as young as you wind up sniffing that perfume that Arizona hands out free to murderers. I'm not a murderer. Of course you're not. Haskell knocked his own head off. He fell, that's how it happened, just like I told you. Sure, and then he made you a present of his belongings. I explained why oh, I had to do that. It. Doesn't make a difference one way or another. I'm not a mourner. I liked Haskell even less than I like you. Yeah, I saw what you did to him. What do you mean? Well, scratches on his wrist. Sure, I scratched him. I'll say you did. So your idea was to drive the car a little way, maybe into San Bernardino, and then leave it. You weren't going to sell it? Sell it? You think I'm crazy, somebody else's car? See, all I want to do is leave it somewhere and forget I ever saw it. Not only don't you have any scruples, you don't have any brains. I don't get you. Maybe it's a good thing you met me. You'd have got yourself caught, sure. Why, you dope. Don't you know a deserted automobile always rates an investigation? Huh? Look, the cops find a car. Then they get curious. They wonder where the owner is. So, all right, they don't trace Haskell. They trace you. I never thought of that. The only safe way to get rid of the car is to sell it to a dealer. Get it registered under a new name. Say, stop at the next store. I want to get a bottle and do some shopping before we hit L.A. Okay. As soon as we find a place, I'll drop you off and pick you up later. Nothing doing. You're coming in, too. From now on, you and I are like the Siamese twins. Have it your way. But I don't get the point. The point is, I don't want you to get lost. I'm not going to beat it if that's what you're afraid of. I'll say you're not. Well, I'm going to see that you sell this car so you don't get caught. Thanks. 
course, your interest wouldn't be financial, would it?